Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Um, today is Friday night. Um, I've been thinking about uh, my list for Nova, uh, which is coming up next weekend. The lists are due on Sunday, uh, so in two days. Um, and I've just been kind of thinking through if I want to make any changes um, from the list that I took to Goonhammer um, last weekend. Um, just kind of thinking about what the meta might be at Nova, whether I, you know, want to make any changes to try and, I don't want to say counter, but like do better against some of the big scary lists that I'm um, kind of expecting to see there. Anything like that. Um, I'll probably go through the scenarios um, and just double check those as well. Um, I think, just to spoil everything here, I think I've decided that I'm just going to stick with the same list um, as I did at Goonhammer, um, which, uh, to just overview again, it's OBR, it's all Myriad, Sonor, boring, uh, but I at least don't have Catacross. <laughs> you know, I'm at least special a little bit. Um, I've got a Soul Mason, Leech Cavallo's Bone Shaper, uh, and Archon. There's Archon on here. There he is. Ooh, I was gonna say. <laughs> did I did I somehow cheat on my opponents by 400 points? No, Archon is on there. Great. Um, two by five Death Riders, which I think is just the absolute minimum Death Riders you want to run because they're amazing. Um, the Morganist Archai, Mortec Guard, Mortis Guard, and of course the Nightmare Predator, and the Bowtie Nexus. Um, all good stuff. Um, so I think I'm just gonna stick with this. Um, the things I was thinking through. Um, so if you watched my last video, you know at Goonhammer I played Seraphon Starborn, um, which is kind of one of the scary lists I feel like right now, and it's kind of the main reason I took Null Myriad. Uh, I played Korn, um, which is another very strong faction right now uh, that I expect to see at least a few of at Nova. And I played Slaves, a very fast Killy Slaves list, which I don't think Slaves are anything special right now, um, but that arch type of a list um, just the very, the very alpha strike charge and kill everything. Um, you know, you see that in, you see variants of that with like pigs, slaves. Obviously, they're different, but just that arch type of the list, it was good to play against, and I felt okay against it. Um, and then I played, oh, cities, right? I played cities, uh, which I don't expect to see any of uh, because the new book's not out yet. Um, I've also gotten games with this list in against uh, Fire Slayers with just lots of bodies and against um, Its with like one of the big, one big squig herd and like two by 10 bounders and things, um, which is not exactly probably the most powerful squig list, um, at least against me. Um, so I've seen a variety of things. Now, the things that I haven't played against with this particular list um, that are the scary things right now are obviously the two big death armies that everybody is is scared of right now, which is Soul Blight, and of course my own OBR. Um, looking at, so the Nova Open, um, unfortunately on, on the app you can see, um, yeah, on the app you can see some people have already like, already have their factions displayed and their lists submitted, even though um, lists are not due until Sunday. Um, but just just from the small subset of people that are on here already, you know, there's 115 people listed. There's maybe like 30 people with lists. I think out of those 30 people um, with their factions listed, there's already like six OBR, and that's not counting me. <laughs> so there's at least, you know, that's seven out of 30, 35 lists that I know so far are already OBR. Um, so I've been thinking about that mirror matchup and. The other big scary thing right now is Soul Blight in multiple varieties. So um, there's the Tom Guan list that's just like 160 zombies. Um, I think I saw a comment on AOS Coach chat uh, the other day um, that I, I, Tom, Tom was in Coach chat. You know, there there was one or two messages back and forth about the list, and you know, he was saying that he thinks that list would still be strong and competitive even if it went up like 300 or 400 points, which is just crazy. 
Um, I feel like something like OBR would still be competitive if the list went up like 60 to 100 points, but like beyond that, you're you're really just you're having to drop like entire units. Um, so kind of crazy that that's his opinion. Um, and somebody else followed up in chat who would have, I guess, played Tom with the list that um, in the game where Tom beat him, Tom didn't even bring in like 60 zombies onto the board out of reserve. He just like left them there to die because it, 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 it didn't need them, I guess. Probably the whole board was taken up by zombies and dire wolves already, um, which is just which is just crazy. Um, I'm also a little worried. So at Goonhammer and in practice games, I haven't played it. I haven't played really any shooting with this exact list. I did play a light on shooting Heden Knights list with a similar uh, list to the one I'm running. So I had that experience, but like that wasn't a really good test against shooting. Um, I played a kind of bad KO list um, at ATC. Again, not with this exact OBR list, but like with OBR. Um, and I think, yeah, so so I'm, so I'm basically, in my head, I'm thinking, how will I do well, or how will I do against, like, a very shooting heavy heat nice list with Elicor? How will I do in the mirror? And how will I do against um, Soul Blade? Those are kind of the three big things in my head where I'm like, if I'm changing my list at all, I'm making a change specifically to deal with one of those three things. Those are those are the three things I feel like I need. You know, I haven't I haven't really practiced against um, enough to know the matchup well, and those are the things I feel like if you're gonna go five and zero, but eight and zero, I guess at Nova, uh, like those are the things you are going to have to beat at least once. Like you are not getting to the finals, probably not even getting to day two without beating a Soul Blight and an OBR. You know, maybe a shooting list. Um, there are there are a couple KO on the on the factions that I can see already. Um, I'll start I'll start there. I'll start with the shooting arch archetype because I think I have the least to say about that. Um, I feel like KO the like the the builds that I would be most worried about are the ones that got nerfed. The other one I feel like people aren't playing so the, the the double thunders with like the bridge one you know one in the bridge one in the ironclad like that that got nerfed enough that i think people are not really on that train anymore and then my buddy plays which i i, I think is he thinks and i i think i agree is the best version of ko right now he plays the like one drop two by nine engine riggers in two frigates with you know the stuff around that and that is just nasty because it's a bunch of Ren 2 shooting and then a bunch of Ren 2 attacks in combat and that, that are going to be striking first and you know the boats move super fast. Um, but I, I feel like people aren't super on that train. I, I think that might be the list that the US world scene played for their KO. Um, but I haven't, I haven't seen like a ton of that around um, other than those two instances. Um, I've seen a lot of like 3x3 three three Endron Riggers. I, the one I played at ATC was like two by six um, Sky Wardens, which just seemed kind of bad. Um, but it's not like you know, everything. It's not nothing is like the max double fifteen Thunders list. Um, and I think I think the amount of shooting they're bringing to the table now, I can weather. And then the Endron Endron Riggers lists um, or the Sky Wardens lists are a little bit combat focused and dependent on charging in to really you know, do their full damage. And I think that's where, um, you know, I, I just, I think I can screen well enough. And I think the minus three charge aura helps with that. Um, so I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling okay into KO and I'm also fast. This list is also fast. I have five units that are move 10 or above. Um, so it's it's fast enough that I can go get things, and then I think the big piece against KO is also the the nightmare predator just popping a you know mortals on everything it moves over. So whichever boat has more characters, I'm just sending over nightmare predator to just pop D three mortals on every character and double tap one, and then you know hopefully cast curse of years on something. And I 
it just feels like feels like I have the tools um, with the place KO in is now and with the prevalence of KO that I don't need to work around KO. Um, and then the other big bugaboo for shooting is the Heat Knights of Sladesh list with Bellicor and anywhere from 55 to 88 archers. Um, I did see a list online. I think it was on Honest Wargamer, um, which I watch occasionally. Um, I think one of the lists he reviewed was, <laughs> it was literally like Bellicor, 88 archers, uh, five Bliss Barb Seekers, and that may have been literally the whole list. Um, it's scary. Um, it is, oh, and a, a Lord of Pain for the aura of plus to wound. And um, I don't know if it's hidden wound or just wound. Anyway, um, this is definitely scary. Uh, you know, it's it's pretenders, so they can they can triple um, give out triple commands. So like, they can auto run six things. So effectively, have thirty inch range on everything. Um, of course, I feel like the game plan for me would be to. So even even though they effectively have range, thirty. That's because they're moving 12 and then shooting 18. So if they're within 18 of my stuff, I can get to them. Um, I think it largely depends on whether they're smart enough to prioritize the more ghasts, which is not that complicated of a tactic. <laughs> I hope, you know, I, I would assume people would do so. Um, because them going in and shutting down a leech hell is obviously huge. Like if I can go in with the more ghasts and tag two units so that they can't unleash hell and then just get in like anything else. Like archers will just start disappearing, and I feel like that list has pretty diminishing return. I, I feel like it. I feel like it starts to lose steam fast once you start getting through like one or two of the the archer units. So I don't. It, it, just saying, like the fifty-five archer case, you know, if you if you get through a unit of twenty-two of those and like half another unit, like you get rid of thirty-three archers and. Whatever. This isn't complicated math. You've, you've killed three fifths of the shit. Of course, it's going to be worse. This isn't mind blowing. Um, so, moral of stories. I feel like I can hopefully survive. I don't know if that's a one drop. I don't know. It's probably one drop. That kind of sucks. It's one drop that sucks because I might get doubled. I feel like if I get doubled, I probably just die. He probably shoots off enough because I probably depends on mission. I don't think I can get in first turn kill stuff really he'll probably deploy a little back anyway because the one drop i'm in trouble it's a two or three drop i feel okay but i don't think uh, i don't think that i don't think running into that list is scary enough that i want to switch out my command trait from diversionary tactics the minus three charge aura to aura of sterility just feels like the really scary, other than the Heat Knights of Slanesh, it feels like the really scary stuff isn't shooting heavy right now. So, so there's one thought, like I thought about maybe I switch out Diversionary Tactics for um, Aura of Sterility. In that case, I would probably switch my General to be the Bone Shaper and put it on him. And then I could switch my Grand Strat to um, uh, spellcasting spot. So just keep the, the Bone Shaper alive, who never got even close to getting hurt um, in like any of the games I've played. So that's a bonus. That would be a bonus with that change. But I, I think I value the diversionary tactics. Um, and one of the big reasons I value that, actually, army I didn't mention. I have also, it, it feels like there's going to be a lot of Beasts of Chaos at Nova. Um, so that is an army I haven't played against at all. I'm going to get a practice game against them on Monday. Um, but I feel like diversionary tactics is huge against the Beast of Chaos. Because if I can get up, um, I get a soul release on Archon, I can have one side of my line that nothing can come up within 12. And then I can have the Leash Kvalos behind a screen on the other side, giving minus three to charge. So the big scary Bulgar unit coming in, um, I think I said this in a previous video, you know, the big scary Bulgar unit coming in is on a rerollable eight instead of rerollable five, which is a totally makeable charge, but you know, it's obviously way less likely than a rerollable five <laughs> by order of magnitude, uh, practically. 
Um, and of course, you know, they have, they have tricks to pull things out of position, you know, move something 2d6 towards the board edge, which could absolutely just pull this guy away from where I want him to be and set up the charge better. Um, I, I would hopefully, you know, I, I would probably play to, to box this guy in so he can't be pulled toward a board edge and mess up my whole formation. Um, but yeah, I, I think for that and for all of the Alpha Strike armies and all of that, I, I really think diversionary tactics has to stay in. It's just so good. Um, all that is to say, I don't think I'm worried enough about the shooting armies going in to switch the list up because of that. Um, now, thinking about Soul Blight, uh, I probably sounded real dumb in my video where I was prepping for Grunhammer because I did not know what this list did, the Legion Knight list that was there. Um, <laughs> Uh, it ended up, I, th I thought it was real bad. Looking at this list, I'm going to use my sword to close the door over here. Excuse me. Um, probably sounded real dumb because I looked at this list and I had no idea what it did. And I was just like, Black Knights seem bad. And Black Knights are not bad. If you talk to people like you and Hammer. Uh, and this list went 3 1. It was, it was the fourth place list. Um, so yeah, it turned out I was dumb. So I came home. And I said, all right, uh, Legion of Legion of Night does what now? Like, I, I didn't even know what the subfaction did. Turns out it's real good. It's just Mortis Praetorians from OBR. So anytime you charge something, uh, sorry, anytime your enemy, yeah, sorry. I'm speaking from the perspective of Legion of Night player. Anytime one of your units gets charged, one of your own units, you have the option uh, once per turn to make a charge with one of your own units that's within 12 inches of the charging unit. So just like Mortis Praetorians, it's a counter charge thing that happens once per turn. Um, and in addition to that, Manfred, who's, I, I like skimmed his new War Scroll once, um, but didn't really fully lock that into memory. Uh, so Manfred also has the counter charge thing. So instead of, um, instead of moving D6 inches when he uses the redeploy command, he can instead attempt a charge, which is freaking amazing. Um, yeah, so I have my I have my totally legitimate source of <laughs> soul bright soul soul bright. That'd be that would be a fun list. Do a soul bright list. Uh, no, so I have my totally legitimate source of soul blight rules up in the other tab here. And yeah, uh, if he makes it, yeah, so. <laughs> If he receives the redeploy command, he can charge instead of moving d6. And if he charges, he gets strike first that turn. And he is way hittier than Archon is. He has five attacks. There are threes, threes, round two, two damage um, for, for um, Manfred himself, uh, in addition to the, the ones from the mount that are that same profile. Four threes, round two, two damage. So he's got a bunch of round two, two damage attacks, way more than Archon does. Um, you know, he's a Vampire, so he can heal. He has built in ignoring first wound or mortal cause in each phase, which is great. Um, you have to, got the annoying thing where you have to resolve his attacks in a certain order. So you have to allocate everything else first before uh, his sword, the, the five attack, run two, two damage sword. And if you slay anything with that sword, uh, you add one to attacks of melee weapons for summonable, stu summonable uh, units around him. So it it's not the hugest deal, especially like in this list where um, you know there's not like the grave guard in here. So nothing summonable here is really hitty, but like in a list with grave guard, I guess that could be good. But the the big takeaway for me that I didn't know was that this list doesn't just have one, but like two opportunities to counter charge every turn. One of them in not the yeah. Geez, redeploy command is in the movement phase, so that's even a charge in the enemy movement phase, not even the enemy charge phase that Manfred can charge. So like, that's not just out of your turn; that's like out of phase charging in the enemy turn, which is brutal because they, you know, you can you can get a charge before they even get to their charge phase, so you get first choice there, which is just nasty, and I did not appreciate. Um, so I didn't I didn't appreciate any of that about Legion of Night. And that does make the that does seem like it makes the Black Knights a bit better um, with the twenty 
uh, champs is a charge model. So their charge models are based on um, number of models in the unit. It's two dice per model on five ups rather than the charge roll. Um, so that is, you know, that's that's six mortal wounds if they're at full strength on average, just going in and they get to do it. They make a counter charge in the enemy phase, uh, can be nasty. So yeah, didn't appreciate that. Um, I want to read real quick the White King on Skeleton Steed. I think that's the only other thing I don't really know. Um, Morbix Claw is a plus two um, to cast for anything in like 12 inches of that Vampire Lord. I think it's once, might be once per game. Um, but the Vampire Lord like can't move that turn if he does it, so he just sets up like a little or plus two to cast. Um, so the White King on Steed, oh yeah, all right, there you go. <laughs> oh, oh geez. All right. Yeah. So this list is way better than I appreciated. I was just speaking from the world of ignorance when I reviewed this. I should have read it. I should have read the rules. Uh, so, so what the White King on Skeletal Steed does, in addition to being just one of the most awesome freaking models ever, um, you can reroll charge rolls for friendly Black Knight units wholly within 12 inches of the White King. And in addition, if a friendly Black Knight unit finishes a charge move wholly within 12 of that unit, uh, the charge mortals on a four up instead of five up. So uh, yeah, that unit of 10 Black Knights rolling 20 dice are going to do 10 mortals on the charge instead of six. And that's getting into like real scary territory. So yeah, definitely a better list than I appreciated. Of course, I knew the 30 skeletons are just like, you don't kill them off. Half the ones that are dead are coming back every single combat phase, which is horrible. The dire wolves um, have the eligible to pile in within six instead of three and pile in six inches. So like, that's just two sets of 20 wounds that are just annoying and could be pinning things. Still don't really know what the Mortis engine does. I think it does some AOE mortal thing, which is never bad. So yeah, so this, this list, way better than I thought. And this is just one of like three or four different types of um, soul blight lists that are real good right now. So there's this, this, there's the infinite zombies that I talked about that Tom Guan runs. Um, I think the Legion of Blood is still very good. So that you generally see the unrendable zombie dragon and Neferata and things. Um, so yeah, there's just like multiple types of soul blight. That are good right now, and it's scary. <laughs> I think I'm most, I think I'm more scared of 160s zombies than I am of this. Again, because for the Black Knights, I have the minus three charge aura, which prevents a little bit of shenanigans there, or at least makes it harder, um, and it's just less wounds to get through. Um, one of the other things about Soul Blight is their magic lore is very good, um, but unlike unlike the OBR lore, which has kind of a balance of like debuffing enemies and a lot of buffing your own units, um, it does feel like the Soul Blight lore is mostly around debuffing the enemy. Um, so Null Myriad is very good for <laughs> preventing that, obviously, and in fact feels almost necessary given the existence of and the, you know, the strength of Soul Blight right now, in addition to uh, the Seraphon. I'm telling you, I've been so tempted, I've probably said this in a, in a previous video, I've been so tempted to go like Mortis Praetorians just for extra funsies instead of, uh, instead of Null Myriad, because like I said, there's there's like six other OBR already that I can see that are probably all Null Myriad. They probably all have Catacros. Uh, and I just want to be different. And I want to be a different special little boy. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, I think the play is just to get more practice with the, the Null Myriad. And I think it's so good into um, things like the strong um, Soul Blight spell lore. And obviously, he has Merciless Blizzard. Um, and the Seraphon and, and other things. Um, makes me sad that you know this list gets to do the counter charge shenanigans and I'm too much of a coward to take the, the OBR counter charge um, subfaction, but we'll deal with that. I'll, uh, I'll talk to the therapist about that one. Um, 
So yeah, so Soulblight, like I said, this one I think scares me slightly less than the infinite zombies because that many zombies is just so many goddamn wounds to get through. And it just ugh, the the resummoning dead units um, is brutal. I think my game plan there, I think I have the bodies and speed. I don't know how much to like... I don't know how much to prioritize. This is why I need practice games against Soul Blade. I don't know how much to prioritize zoning out the summons back from the the grave sites. Um, obviously, you have to kill the unit first before it even matters. Um, but you know, I know I can. If I get Soul Release off, I can just park Archon on one of the grave sites and say, you don't get to put anything up from this grave site, and I could. You know, I'm imagining with like a unit of Death Riders or something, I could zone out the other grave site that's outside of the Soul Blade player's territory, um, such that if he's summoning unit back, it has to go back into his territory, which I don't know how important that is. I haven't, I haven't played this enough, but it feels like that would at least force the uh, resummoned units to you know, if I'm forcing them to come back in his territory, they're at least not helping like cap points outside of his territory that I've been holding. Um, so we'll see. That that seems like an important thing. Um, I do think so. I can put you know with OBR with the lore, I can put a four board versus mortals onto a unit, um, which will help with the zombie. You know, um, whatever it's called, drag them down. But they do mortals when they die to things within three inches. So like. I feel like getting that up on whatever I want to be killing zombies with would be a priority into the zombie list. Um, it does feel like probably um, probably like the Mortec Guard can just lift a unit of... <sighs> probably can't quite lift a unit of 40 zombies with 60 attacks. Depends on the buffs I have up on them. They can go through, they can chew through a lot of zombies. <laughs> If the the Mortec Guard and something else can probably kill a unit of forty zombies in a turn, but there's God, there's 120 more zombies after that in Tom's Tom Gon's list, and that's just atrocious. We'll see. I, I I look forward to reporting back and seeing. I'm sure I'll play. A, well, I'm not sure I'll play a Soul Blade. I, I bet there's a good chance I play a Soul Blade, and I'm I'm looking forward to reporting back on on how it went. Um, God, all of that all of that is to say I don't actually know what I would change to make I, I don't know what I would change to give myself a better chance against the um, soul blight lists so it seems silly to be trying to make changes to help with that matchup when I don't know that matchup well enough um, yeah and it's funny you know the the like standard strong um sorry i have an itchy nose right now um the standard strongest arguably um obr list is like catacross and one or two by six and mortis guard and all that jazz and i don't think that really like i don't think that really helps against the soul blight relative to the list i'm bringing because like you put you know catacross puts minus one to wound on something like who cares? Obviously, well, it, you know, it does giving everything all defense and all attack in a giant aura obviously helps all the time. Like the let's see, math. Six Immortus Guard, 18 attacks. We'll say they're on twos and threes, because I don't think there's anything in that list to give them plus one to wound. So 18 attacks, twos gives you 15 hits, threes gives you 10. Two damage each, twenty damage, and zombies have a six up ward. They might have a five up ward in the lots of zombies list because of like Ulf and Karna and Phylactery. Um So even with the double fight, you're not killing forty zombies even with double fighting six Mortis Guard in one turn. So yeah, that I I I think Milas might even. I think my list might be a little better against the Soul Blight just because I have, I don't know, I have some more bodies. I have some more bodies with the Mortec Guard. I'm a little faster and can spread out a little more with the fast things in Archon to like block off 
like block off points and block off grave sites. I don't know. I this is all talking out my ass because I, I just don't know. So yeah, so that's a wash. It's probably the scariest faction out there, and I have no idea what I can do to fight it better. So I'm not gonna worry about it. And there will be a similar theme with my last consideration, which is that um, in the mirror matchup, I have not played the mirror matchup at all, and I just you know, and I, I know in my head what Catacross does, uh, and I don't know, I don't know if I can beat it. I think it's, I think that, I think that would be a KG match. Um, I think I may. I think that one actually would depend a lot on the scenario because if it's a large number of objective scenario, I have more speed and ability to spread out than the Catacross double six Immortus Guard like bunker castle thing. Um, although of course the six Immortus Guard are coherent and can spread out all on the line now. Um, and the Catacross bubble is 24 inches, so it doesn't it doesn't even have to be that that grouped up. Um, I think the I think I think a minor advantage I have is that Catacross is faction locked to Mortis Praetorians and thus does not get the null myriad spell ignore. So I can at least try and live the dream of using Archon to just curse of years Catacross. And you know, he's gonna be in bodyguard range of a bunch of Mortis Guard, but like, you know, maybe I live the dream and get a big Curse of years off and kill a bunch of Immortus Guard and do some wounds to Catacross and then, you know, what uh, his turn he brings it all back and like it doesn't matter. But look, let me dream. I can live the dream. I can curse of years Catacross. I can try to somehow get my Merciless Blizzard guy in range of Catacross. I what what I'm saying is I at least have a target that is um vulnerable to magic where I can I can send my send my endless spell back there. I can just I'll be trying to cast cards of yours every turn. And at least even if I'm not really hearing Catacross, it's at least pinging wounds onto all the Mortis Guard as he bodyguards. And that's really that's really like you know the the path to killing a Mortis Guard is not getting through their stacked like two up or one up save. It's like getting the characters who then have to pass off the wounds onto the Immortus Guard. So I'm hoping that I can do that. I just, you know, yeah, I think I just really have to be casting all my magic on Catacross. And I need to be trying to get my fast shit like behind the Immortus Guard wall into the characters. Um, part of it will depend on whether he's on whether like they're they're just catacross or whether they're they're double mortark. Um after double mortark and a bunch, you know, six immortus guard, there's not that many points left. I feel like the lists I see are like two by five death riders, double mortark, and um you know, as many mortis guard fits in after that. So like in those cases, I don't know, I'm just trying to kill their fast things, the death riders. Before they can do their Death Rider tactic, I'm trying to. They're probably one drop too. Oh, it's going to be painful. <sighs> well, anyway, the good news is, the good news is, um, I'm kind of treating Nova as a learning experience in prep for the Atlanta World Championships that I got a ticket to um, due to winning Goonhammer. So I think. Rather than changing anything now, I'm just going to roll with it into Nova. I'm going to hopefully play some good lists and good people that I have not played before and just get that experience to know if I need to change things up. Um, last thing, real quick. So the format of Nova is it's eight rounds. Um, so it's two on Friday. No, it's three on Friday. Sorry, it's three on Friday three on Saturday and two on Sunday, but after round five on Saturday, they give everybody a chance to drop uh, and just play five games, which 98% certain that's what I'm going to do unless I'm by some miracle in the top eight um, going into round six. Uh, because what they're doing this year, instead of, I was under the, I was under the assumption that 
the last three rounds were only for the top eight. But what they're doing this year is they're giving everybody a chance to um, play all eight rounds. So after first five rounds, um, the top eight will go into like the championship bracket um, to determine the overall winner of the tournament. Uh, but anybody else that wants to go the full eight games, they'll also split into other eight person groups uh, and they'll each like do a bracket and there's going to be prizes for each, um, we're calling them pods, each eight person pod. So like the winner of each eight person pod is going to get a prize, which I think is awesome. It's super cool to give everyone the chance to to go all the way to eight games if they want. I don't really want to. <laughs> I have a friend hosting a party on Saturday for Labor Day that I would like to go to. Um, so, you know, the negotiation I've had with with my wife is um, I'm planning to drop after five, but you know, if I'm in the top eight and have a chance to, to go all the way in the actual winner's bracket, um, can't really pass it up. I gotta do that. So we'll see. Um, hopefully I run into a real scary sublight list and it's a moot point and I don't have to think about it and I'll just drop after five. Um, yeah, as you can see here, um, the, uh, that a little bigger. Uh, the objective or objectives, the battle plans are ice fields right off the bat. Hell yeah. So excited. Love ice fields. I love it. It's so great. And OBR loves it because we don't have to run. We can just do our extra three inch move and not slip and slide on the ice. Um, geometric pulse. Um, I have, I think I've played this, I've played this once with OBR. Um, this one's fine for OBR. Um, credit to Alex Tubbs, who I see chat in um, AOS Coach chat a lot, um, who has talked about you know OBR strategy for this um, particular battle plan. Um, and his advice is you just go stand on the middle two points, and no matter which side the pulse is coming from, it's going to make it to the middle. <laughs> and then you're standing there and you control the middle two. So you're going to control as the pulse goes across for a couple turns and just like build up a big lead and, and you've hopefully killed the enemy and such. Um, seems like a super reasonable way to play it. Um, Powerflex played that at Goon Goonhammer. Um, it's a good one. I like it. It's the, it's the one with the A and the B and person going second switches, uh, not switches, determines whether A or B are turned on. Uh, it's real cute. I basically like went and stood between uh, one of the B and one of the A's on my side and then build things <laughs> until I could get both. Um, every step is forward. That one's a little weird for everyone, but I feel like especially OBR. So this is the one where if you charge, you count for an extra model per model. Um, so it doesn't help doesn't help giants because they count as like 31 instead of 30. But you know, a unit of infantry will count per two per model if you charge. So yeah, so if you charge you count as extra, but if you retreat that turn, you count for zero. So OBR, you know, I like to, you know, we have all the retreat and charge shenanigans, and if you're retreating and charging, then you're counting as nothing on a point, which can be annoying. Um Spring Trap, played that again. Um didn't appreciate until I got in that game that it's It's a nice one because there's only three objectives, which is always good for OBR. Um, and because the uh, your territories go all the way up to the center, um, this is the one where I was really able to like create choke points in the center with the Bone Tithe Nexus. Um, so I was able to like put the Mortic Guard in a choke point and have them not like immediately get popped by the big scary things. Uh, then we have Nexus Collapse, which I don't remember what that one is, but hopefully it won't matter. I won't get there. No road without risk. Hell yeah, I love that that's in there. This is the one where you can like deploy in combat if you want. It's right there in the name, no road without risk. And then limited resources is the siphon one that I've played before. I should look up when Nexus collapses real quick. Hold on. Nexus collapse is... Ah, uh, right, yes, it's the weird, like, diagonal set of six objectives, and they start disappearing. So the person going, oh, no, 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 it's not the person going second. 
Right, this is an interesting one. So it's at the start of every battle round after the first, after determining who is going first, the player with the fewest victory points can collapse to objectives. If, if you're tied, you roll off, and the winner collapses one. So you roll a dice for every unit within six of a collapsed objective. On a four-up, the unit suffers D3 mortals, and then the objectives are removed for the... That is super interesting. I kind of wish that was in the first five rounds, because I want to play that. I've never played that one before. I probably have to play that one on Monday in my practice game. Um, yeah, anyway, so that's that's kind of my thoughts going into Nova list submission. Uh, like I said, due on Sunday. Um, I think I will do, I'll probably do one more video before Nova. Um, just once lists are visible after. I don't know if they'll be visible like right after Sunday. I assume some, some people are going to be late. Um, whenever lists are up, I might go through and like review some lists, just like I did for Goonhammer. I'm not going to review all 180 something <laughs> lists. It's way harder than reviewing like the 15 for Goonhammer, but you know maybe I'll pick like a, a top 10 that I think looks scary or interesting. Uh, maybe I'll talk about my practice game with my friend Jake. Uh, but yeah, that's it for tonight. Thank you for listening. Peace.